And 72 years ago today, 6th of June, 1944, 160,000 troops boarded landing craft in the wee morning hours, traveled across the English Channel, and landed in Normandy, France. These 160,000 troops came from the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, and some other smaller contributing countries, such as France and Australia. They took part in what is known as the largest amphibious operation of the Second World War, D-Day, or Operation Overlord. The painting behind me depicts the Canadians landing at Juno Beach, which was a code name given to one of five Allied beaches. The code names were simply to designate specific areas of the coastline in Normandy, France, where the Allies were to land, try to avoid some confusion in between the troops. The Canadians landed at Juno Beach. The Americans had two designated be beaches of Omaha and Utah, and the English, the British, the United Kingdom, had two designated beaches of Sword and Gold. The Canadian landing at Juno Beach uh, saw roughly 18, uh, sorry, 15,000 troops taking part, Canadian troops, accompanied as well by uh, tanks and uh, supporting aircraft and a naval bombardment. So just before the Allied troops were to land on their designated beaches, naval, naval guns opened fire on designated targets on the French coastline and in behind the French coastline. The idea was to soften up uh, the German positions who had been there for the last four years uh, in order to facilitate uh, the Allied landing on those beaches. So the Canadians landed at Juno Beach, and Juno Beach itself was divided into a couple of sectors. So each landing uh, regiment or battalion knew exactly where they, where they were supposed to go. Planning started for Operation Overlord back in 1943, and it involved uh, the Dieppe Parade of August 1943, which was just kind of a, a test to see how such a large amphibious landing could go. In any case, so when the Canadians landed at Juneau Beach, uh, each section or company of men knew exactly where they were supposed to go. The landing craft, which were flat-bottomed ships uh, carrying troops into the beaches, knew exactly where they were supposed to go as well. What the planners did is they talked to uh, the British citizens and any French and any other country uh, visitors that were in the United Kingdom at the time, asking them to send them their postcards and, and personal pictures of the French coastline. The idea was to build an image of the French coastline where the Allies were supposed to land and designate specific buildings along that coastline that the landing craft sailors the, the, could steer towards specifically. In the painting behind me, what you see is a, uh, a nice big house. And I'm going to move to the painting. So the house at the top center of the image is what's known today as La Maison des Canadiens, or Canada House, if you will. And today, it is uh, the official museum for the Queen's Own Rifles of Canada. And they were one of the regiments that actually landed in this very section of Juneau Beach. And this is where, uh, in the, within the first few minutes of uh, the landing craft door coming down and the soldiers coming down the ramp, the Queen's Own Rifles lost almost 100 soldiers within just the very few, first few minutes. This was one of the most heavily defended areas where the Canadians landed at Juneau Beach. Uh, a neat little thing, and I've been doing these tours for a number of years and talking about this painting for a number of years, and I just happened to notice it today, sitting here, is up in the far right-hand corner of the painting is a machine gun nest. And if I remember correctly, it's one of three uh, German machine gun nets which had direct line of sight right along the front of the beach. So when the soldiers of the Queen's Own Rifles landed on Juno Beach, these machine gun nests opened fire, uh, killing, the, you know, causing those 100 casualties within just a few minutes. Uh, there are a couple of neat stories about Canada House, or La Maison des Canadiens, where uh, around 2009 um, there was a, a memorial taking place, or an anniversary taking place, of the D-Day landings. And some Queen's Own Rifles veterans of D-Day uh, went to the museum, and in the museum uh, registry they wrote in, uh, nice to see the house, so sorry about the grenades we threw in your cellar. Uh, so the house itself had to be cleared of German snipers uh, positioned up in the top floors and a machine gun nest on the lower ground floor. Um, the great thing about this painting is it depicts what uh, D-Day would have been like for the Canadians when they landed at bernières sur mer uh, this, town, this little village. Uh, in the background here, you can see uh, what is known as an anti-tank ditch. And it was a sloped wall, which basically it could not, uh, it did not allow tanks to come up the beach and go right over the wall. Uh, along the top of that sloped wall was barbed wire, which would then impede the advance of the infantry. Uh, a little further on the beach, you can see some of the German defenses. Uh, an important thing to note is that the Germans had had control 
uh, of France since, since 1939, 1940. Uh, so in those four years leading up to uh, D-Day, they were able to spend four years of building defenses. Those included uh, huge casemats or concrete bunkers filled with large guns that could hit ships way out in the English Channel. Uh, you had mines spread out throughout the sand. You had machine gun nests with interlocking arcs of fire all along D-Day beaches. Uh, and you had these obstacles right in the water. Um, and they came in various shapes and sizes. Some were, um, I can't remember the exact name, but basically it was metal crosses and they'd be interlocked. Uh, and you also had simple telephone poles sitting in the water with mines sitting on top. The idea being that any landing craft trying to, to land on D-Day would hit those landing craft, uh, hit those mines on top of the obstacles and just be uh, blown up in the water. Canadians on D-Day, uh, we suffered about 1,000 casualties, uh, 359 confirmed killed on D-Day. Some historians will say that uh, the Allies did not succeed in meeting their objectives on, on D-Day, which is, it, it is true. Uh, but what is important to note is the the tenacity of the German defenses along D-Day, uh, along the beaches on D-Day, and the fact that the Canadians advanced further than any of the Allied forces on D-Day. They reached uh, almost their final objective, but had to pull back in the face of German tank units moving in to counteract, uh, to counterattack. So the French coastline today is changed. A lot of those German anti-tank anti -tank defenses, some of the German bunkers are no longer there, but you can still visit uh, a large portion of the defenses that are still there so that we then therefore remember. And of course, la maison des Canadiens up in Bernier-sur-Marne.